there are models, there are models around, like, um, Funding towards things that are creative and innovative. We've had a fantastic response from people to engage in the consultation process for our draft New Zealand health strategy. Consultation has now concluded and we're really busy having a look at all of the feedback and information that we've gathered through this important process. On behalf of the Ministry, I'd like to say a huge thanks to everybody who's been involved in this really important work. As well as more than 400 written submissions received, we've heard firsthand from more than 2,000 people who have taken part in 100 formal meetings around the country. Wouldn't it be great if, uh, when Ministry of Social Development was looking at housing policy, uh, if we were looking at um, education policy around health literacy, um, if uh, looking at health outcomes, looking at um, the impact of various policies in other areas of government and their impact on health outcomes and health equity um, would be a really good way of ensuring that uh, not only do um, uh, people get well in the health system, but they live well and stay well. I like to think that we'd see our over 65s fairly early on so that we see whether they're actually heading towards diabetes, uh, what's driving that, are they too obese, not taking enough exercise, heading towards diabetes, and actually giving them a, a, an early warning about this and saying, hey, you're, not gonna, you're gonna have a pretty unpleasant end to your life, but you can do something about it. You need to do that at 45, not, not 65, well, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. The conversation has been mature and thoughtful and the interaction between people has been enthusiastic. This has generated a lot of very useful feedback and worthwhile suggestions, which we are considering as we finalise this health strategy. Well, there's a consistent theme for the Saturday meeting. I haven't been to all of them, but I've been to some of them. I think one is the willingness of people to come and contribute, uh, and they come and contribute with great passion. So this morning I've met uh, someone from public health, I've met someone from the smoking cessation, I've met board members, I've met practice nurses, now I've met people from other government departments. Now all these people come uh, with the desire to actually want to contribute and make something different. We've also had a big response online. More than 6,500 people have visited the consultation website and the consultation documents have been downloaded nearly 7,000 times. Around 2,000 people have visited the online discussion and left more than 100 comments on it. People are enthusiastic about the five themes. People powered, closer to home, value in high performance, one team and smart system. Here's some of the comments that we've received during consultation. And so we want the focus to be on the person in the home and we want to focus on health before sickness. So we want people to maintain their health for as long as they can. But when they become sick, we want them to be able to direct their own support and their own care. I think we should have consumers involved at all levels of the health system. I think that's the one thing that would make a difference because that would be a catalyst for driving change to make um, for services to be more responsive to consumers. So we thought for Pacific people to make a behaviour change, you need to touch the heart. We need a system that responds to the need of the community. Making sure that we all own that strategy. And I like the five focus of the health strategy that they're looking at. And, and people power is exactly what I was referring to in, in touching people's heart. You know, because when they own it and, and they feel empowered and they can make the change. So people power is definitely going to be helpful, but you have to deliver it in a way that people will embrace and support that and take it on board. I think children's services should include parenting support, so education for parents, so that they can learn about nutrition and um, the other things that children need to grow up well, behaviour support, so their mental um, health can be supported as well and their cognitive development can proceed well, and all those things will make for a better childhood. Well, I think the closer to home is really about um, knowing who your people are and also knowing who your service is. And if you can get that understanding that, that we're here to help 
and that we will do, do it in ways in which is more accessible to them, then that's best for both the provider and it's also best uh, for the community as well. I was really excited to um, hear about the move towards um, health services within schools and bolstering that up a bit more. I think that's perfect for Pacific communities. Um, you know, we are communities that come from homes that are busy, a lot of parents are working, grandparents don't have transport to get to um, the services they need to get to. So if children are able to learn at a younger age to consider their health, then perhaps maybe when they turn into young adults, it will be second nature for them to access health services rather than to go to friends and figure it out for themselves on Facebook or so forth. So I think that's a that's a really good opportunity there. Healthy, what, what's being healthy look like for you? Doctors. Doctors make you healthy? Mm -hmm. What else makes you healthy? Doctors and fruit? Um, motivate them more, I put more um, social sports out there and um, try and encourage the young ones to give it a go. Make it like compulsory for year nines or whatever in high school to do sports and um, yeah, activities. The thing that I put down was children's um, access to well child tamariki aura services. I think it's something that if all children get access to them, and I mean all children, nobody missing out, um, it means that you've got a better start in life and if you start in life well, it means that all the other things that you spend money on in terms of healthcare have a better outcome. So children can start off with um, more access to the, to the health that they, healthcare they need, because they don't know when to go to the doctor, they always depend on other people to get them the healthcare they need. So. Um, the services need to be quite joined up, culturally competent and um, delivering to all the children. It, it, it came to a point where uh, I'm in a small community and I was able to uh, um, introduce myself in the, into that community and they had all these other um, courses or uh, places, uh, group sessions that you could attend to deal with uh, certain parts of your life. Uh, one would be alcohol and other drugs, and another one is diabetes, and that is, by the way, that's awesome, really awesome. I did four, I, I had to go to four courses, I was really hooked into it because the, the dietitians were able to explain how food works and how the body reacts to the food as well. So and that was an eye opener. It's really good to hear this morning the intent to go uh, to drop down those those solos or to to break it into an inter interactive um, uh, way, a model. You know, so I'm encouraged by that. I, I really uh, want to support that happening. It's kind of like the approach we have here on a marae anyway. We don't just deal with the health issues in isolation. My nurses, my doctors uh, up at the clinic. Uh, interacting with my social services arm, um, my tamariki order nurses, you know, um, our driver license program, you know, because those are the things that our whānau really need. So that that's just a part of our approach to, um, yeah, to to integration. So how are we going to actually bring ourselves together in a way that we can make it easy for them? And given the complexity of a lot of the issues, it actually requires much more than one particular agency to solve these kinds of problems. It's actually information sharing, data, analytics, shared ways of describing and understanding um, our clients where, where they where they cross over the multiple agencies so structuring information and having that information available is really important the other component which is probably um, underestimated but is probably the biggest issue is cultural it's actually um, people in government agencies being prepared to share being prepared to work together and in some cases being prepared to let go and allow others to fill a gap where it might currently exist. I don't think it's particularly one thing. Uh, I think there are multiple which uh, would be connected, but I think the biggest challenge uh, I see uh, right now is um, actually fundamentally rethinking the funding model uh, that in turn uh, results in the way uh, services are either commissioned, purchased, and then the workforce to actually support them. Working in the system, I see, you know, there's there's huge duplication 
of assessment as an example, which is why it's so important as there would be great efficiencies if only we could stop the duplication and share information among clinicians from health to social sectors. You know, it's across the board. Um, so instead of everybody going in and asking the same questions of the poor consumer, we actually share that information and collaborate and, you know, understand each other's roles better as a consequence of that. Oh, look, I think the one thing from where I'm sitting now in a, in a DHB uh, CE role would be for us to really think about the progress we've made over the last six years in moving sh services into primary community and the progress has been quite limited. What is it we've got to do from a sort of a policy, a funding, a workforce, an infrastructure perspective that means over the next 15 years we absolutely are able to make that shift because uh, we need to speed up the progress. Yep. The biggest difference, I think it's actually addressing the social determinants of health and that's actually income and the social welfare and the equity um, uh, problems that we have. Yes, sign up to this, get serious about it, build it into the strategy and then the statement of intent and then the targeting and then the KPIs and keep it going and have people who are really um, championing the, the approach and and um, you know and this isn't just Ministry of Health obviously it's this is about all of the other agencies buying into it as well so it does need um, a community to support it. One of the things that I'm picking up here as well is the the need to sort of challenge some of the established norms, the way we do things, the ideas, the values, the behaviours of our of our system, leaving behind the things that are not making a difference and embracing some different and new things that in fact are going to make a huge difference. Um, I think, you know, uh, thinking about a different uh, way of contributing and working and I think that's really refreshing. To teach and empower everyone to use the model for improvement so that everybody, consumers, all the health providers, right across the whole system, was looking at testing and improving things all the time, measuring what we're doing, knowing whether we're making an improvement, and it just empowers people to say, I've got a good idea, let's test this out, let's do it. If we can break the boundaries and make them flexible, of course, you measure the outcome of what we are trying to achieve, but I think that's the most important thing to me. I also want to mention with the health strategy that uh, workforce development um, is an ongoing um, importance uh, for bringing uh, services to be more culturally uh, competent and uh, more responsive, uh, more whānau-centric. We know that computer algorithms can often come up with better decisions around relatively simple stuff, for example, warfarin dosing to thin your blood or managing your diabetes with insulin dosing. So that gives us more time to talk with the patient about what diabetes means to them or why are they on that, that agent that thins their blood. So it gives us more time for communicating the meaning behind it. The concept of a nationalised health IT system, which I think everybody would agree on as being a good idea, but obviously has some massive practical <laughs> challenges. And the main thing is um, the, uh, the system, um, I feel, is there, there's not enough uh, connections to different departments where they can gather this information um, a patient comes in and um, they can only gather certain information from certain departments. There's not enough connection, I don't think, across the, um, the whole country and between the DHBs in terms of medical records and just, you know, what happens to people and when people move and things. It's quite hard to access all of that. Um, and so, and I also think that it, the um, investment in the information technology is, is a key thing as well. These are just a few of the many comments that we've heard during the course of consultation on the strategy. We also heard a lot over the consultation period about the need to focus on a better end of life. Shortly, we'll be releasing new principles and guidelines called Last Days of Life. This is a great example of the sector and the ministry and consumers working together to produce something that is tangible and clearly needed.
This is the sort of example that we expect to see more of in the future. And we will be able to have these discussions in future forums when we come together to discuss really important things that matter not only to our system, but to the people of New Zealand. Um, I'm very excited about the New Zealand health strategy and the direction of travel uh, that we're um, on. I think um, it's important that the strategy as a policy framework will encourage innovative spaces for whānau and providers and the sector to work in to ensure that uh, we understand what success looks like to them, what well-being looks like to them. It's important that the strategy supports collaborative working together to using resources, wisdom, uh, collective um, support to encourage better outcomes. We're hearing people want change and they want that change with pace. So here at the Ministry we're making changes so that we're better positioned to lead on the New Zealand health strategy and to work alongside the sector and our colleagues across government to make that difference. Achieving outcomes for all New Zealanders will require us to work really smartly with DHBs, with consumer groups, with PHOs and NGOs, and this will require us to play to our strengths, know our roles, responsibilities and accountabilities, and make a real difference together. I think that the, uh, one of the things that we will be looking for is uh, keeping the momentum up. You know, it, this is, so this is not going to be a process that we run during consultation, so we'll be looking at how we uh, honour uh, the commitment by people who are uh, coming to Saturday. Is each year we'll be looking at actually hope we hold at least one of these so that we use the opportunity for people who are interested to hear our, our feedback around what's gone well, what, what, well, what we need, we're thinking about the following year and actually get the feedback input as well. So I think this is a great process.